What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome to my Ultimate Fighter guy. Now, Fighter absolutely encompasses the tank fantasy in Dragon's Dogma 2. If you are the type of player that wants to parry and deflect your way to victory, you are absolutely going to vibe with Fighter. Now, with that being said, it definitely lacks in damage compared to some of the more focused classes like Thief or Archer, but I think it makes up for it in its ability to mitigate pretty much anything that's coming your way. So, with that being said, let's jump in, talk about the various gear choices, and then we will take a look at the skills as always. Now, as for our weapon, we have three real choices here. Dragon's Dogma, da -da -da -da, Molten Fury, and the Exalted. Now, Dragon's Dogma is going to sweep as the best in slot weapon, but Molten Fury and the Exalted aren't too far behind when we consider the value of Holy or the fact that this one has fire built into it. You gotta consider that magic stat, which we don't really have on Dragon's Dogma. But in terms of just raw damage potential, this one will pull ahead. Um, it also has this perk of continuing to strike without taking damage and powers the blade. I haven't been able to do that much testing with it, but I think there's some synergy between that and Righteous Fury, so it's food for thought. As for the shields, Dragon's Aegis is by far gonna be the strongest shield we have access to. Uh, I shouldn't say by far, because it's actually pretty close to some of the other shields, but this one does pull ahead in pretty much every category, so there's no reason to use a different shield, unless you want aesthetics. Looking at the armor, we have a couple different choices. Uh, the Subjugator's Salad is my favorite choice. Ability to raise the visor on this. It basically turns us into Cover Art Man, uh, but we also have Blazing Soul, Monarch's Crowd, Fiendish Armlet. These are all solid late game choices. The Stygian Omen armor, which looks absolutely amazing along with Knightly Brigadine, as well as Thrasher Surcoat. And then on the legs, we have the Vigilant Greaves, but there is also the Meddlesome Cussies, Executioner's Greaves, and Conqueror Sabatons, all decent choices here. And this one, from a raw stat perspective, I think the Conqueror Sabatons is actually better, uh, but, you know, fashion, and this matches the set. So we have, I think total, it's like 30% debilitation against like Silence, Poison, and Sleep, which is pretty nice. Admiral's Mantle, and then for our rings, we have Ring of Triumph, and then I have Ring of Disfavor. And there's a couple other rings you could consider here. Ring of Grit, uh, this is going to reduce the stamina expended when blocking with your shield. Ring of Vehemence, if you want to go for a more damage-oriented fighter. But in general, if you're playing fighter, you're probably trying to hold aggro, and in that case, I think Ring of Disfavor is the best of the choices available. Which late game, man, those things drop like candy. I think I have uh, six or seven of them at this point. So going on over and taking a look at the skills, as always, let's talk about all of them and then move on from there. Uh, now I want to point out that the skill I have right here is very much just going to be kind of a freedom choice. I really like Shield Pummel there. These other three I would consider starters to the fighter. Those skills are going to be what rounds out your class. But this is a pretty open slot to work with whatever you'd like. So talking about all of them though, Burst Strike, this is phenomenal mobility. This is going to dash and get on the target immediately, ensuring you're always on the front line. The damage isn't the best, uh, but the mobility is definitely very nice here. Cloudward Slash, I'm going to be honest, I think this ability is trash. Uh, it's good for like hitting a harpy out of the air, but that's about it. And that's not my job. You know, if the fighter is the one that has to take down the harpies, there's something wrong with your party. Full Moon Slash, very, very respectable here. Uh, solid damage on this as well as AoE capacity. It works pretty well, but I also feel AoE isn't really my role as a fighter, so uh, I ultimately ended up passing up on Full Moon Slash for a Shield Pummel. Gutting Skewer is our weakling killer. We can use this to shred uh, bandits, to shred large hobgoblins, to shred saurians. On top of that, if we're climbing on a target, this is going to be pretty consistent damage that's close to Thief. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it beats Thief, but it is pretty close to what Thief can do on top of a target. Very reminiscent of a Dire Gouge from the original game as well. Hindsight Sweep is a timed dodge counterattack. It is a very strong ability, but personally I prefer Vengeful Slash over it as a counterattack because I don't need to worry about the timing as much. Shield Pummel is very strong knockdown. Uh, it will typically send smaller enemies flying, so you can like launch goblins and wolves and whatnot off cliffs. On top of this, it does a decent amount of knockdown damage on bigger targets, so this is my go-to choice for my fourth slot. Just a fun ability. A little bit of forward momentum, good slam with the shield on top of it. 
Shield Drum is going to be for raw aggro generation, and this does a good job, but I don't want to sacrifice a slot for it. Instead, we are managing aggro via a ring and augments. Launch board, similar to the Warrior, uh, excellent utility here, but, you know, kind of situational. The combat uses that it has are fairly limited, in my opinion. Like, the, the best usage for it is tossing a thief up on top of an enemy, but, you know, a thief could also just run and jump and get on top. Obviously, you can get chests with this. If pawns have launch board, using the up command will direct them to throw you up towards a chest. Flawless guard is our get out of jail card. You can pop this and you're just going to flawless. You can use this when you're about to get stunned, when you're about to get squished. Uh, it's just like the no, don't touch me move. You know, you literally become like the Ninja Turtle and just start spinning around. Vengeful Slash is a phenomenal counter. What's crazy about this is you don't even have to properly time this. You can actually just hold the guard up and wait for something to attack you. So very, very beginner friendly from a parry perspective. Uh, and you can use this to counter a lot of stuff, like a dragon dropping out of the air. Vengeful Slash. Uh, very strong counterattack damage on this as well. Divine Defense is like our ultimate guard. Uh, it's kind of similar like the ultimate guard that Lance has available to it in Monster Hunter, but to be honest, there's not a lot of cases where I found myself having a need for this. Like, if there's an attack that I would need to use Divine Defense for, to be honest, I'd rather just get the hell out of the way. And then lastly, we have Riotous Fury. This is the fighter ultimate and probably our most damaging ability. You got to make sure that you hit the initial shield slam with this, otherwise the attack will just end up whiffing. So definitely make sure you're close enough when you use it. Um, in terms of core skills, you obviously want everything. One of the big things I want to point out here, though, is true deflect. After you're getting a perfect deflect, you don't have any uh, stamina consumption on the counterattack. So make sure you're following up with those counterattack hits. As for augments, I like to tank things up. So metal, apotatrasm, or however the hell you pronounce that, apotropasm. That's probably it. Uh, but so physical defense, magical defense, provocation, this in conjunction with our ring should give us enough aggro gen in the field, constancy to prevent any knockdowns, and then zeal and dynamism to round things on out. And all in all, that makes us a very, very solid tank. In fact, just looking at the raw stats, you can see 30% resist to poison, sleep, and silence. Uh, magic defense up at 611, knockdown resist at 793, a raw defense at 954. We are a defensive beast. But either way, let's jump in and show you type of damage we can do. Back to the Gorko mountain range. And even though we are a tank, like our damage isn't terrible, to be fair. Early on, it definitely feels like Fighter falls behind compared to Thief, especially. But Fighter can do some respectable damage. It's just, you know, not as much as pure DPS classes, so... I don't know why you think it's nap time, buddy. I'm gonna wake you up. Doing that, that big upswing, great to help open up the heart. see the, the damage from this. We were just gouging out health bars on this guy. Are you trying to take over Sarash, bro? I haven't even got to use Righteous Fury yet.
Oh, you're, you're gonna stay in the air? Okay. No. Ah, oh, it's gonna hurt. Let me get Sarash up. Oh, getting a little close. Sarash, you're looking extra crispy right now. Oh, you're you're down? Oh well, this is over. Yeah, Righteous Fury actually does some some pretty respectable damage. But uh you, know, you gotta you gotta get the opening for it. It's just spamming it. You're just gonna bleed through your stamina. Let's tell something. No, I can't. I was like, can I parry that ability? I don't think I can. It's, it's, it's like an AOV screen. enemies that I just absolutely hate fighting as fighter. See the counter. Some big damage on the Dula hands. something that can survive so I can hit. I really hope we get a hard mode soon. I'd love to like play through this with my maxed vocations. Just I'm at the point in the game where it's like I murder everything. There's something strange about the way time <laughs> So that's how we uh, slaughter the little dudes with it. What's up, ugly? Rush getting the knockdowns. There's the follow up knockdown. Right, get over onto the goat. I think the lion, the lion portion might be dead already. So, I mean, like, as you can see, like, the damage isn't terrible. It's 
just, uh, I think it's after you get a taste for warrior, you're like, why shield when I can smash face and break it? But there is something very satisfying about, um, still just like, you know, being the shield guy. We can also do that, which is always funny. How do you mitigate falling damage? I just put the shield in front of me and I jump. And I hope for the best. My curative magics are at your disposal. Wait a moment. This guy will actually get the hit off on me. I'll be able to, to open up and get the counter on him. Get your guard broken, you big nerd. Just got bullied. Sting is yours to Stones everywhere. Let's go into the cave for a little bit. I haven't gotten any like regular blocks off. One of the things that feels a little counterintuitive is like once we get Vengeful Slash, it, it definitely makes me go for perfect parries a lot less. So it's like, why why do I need to do that when I can just hold this and then get a free counter attack, which will do massive damage? Because Vengeful is brutal. Either way, seems like a good spot to wrap things up for the fighter. Definitely a, a really fun class, though, from the tank fantasy. So, either way, uh, closing out things here. And with everyone else covered, next up we will be doing Warfare. I should say everyone covered, but, you know, we, we have the Mage Pawn video. No one's playing as Mage themselves, I don't think. This one guy coming in, ruining my outro. What a fool.